but you didn't just stop there. You made sure that other people were affected. You know, it's yeah, extremely good. Cool. Rolling camera, performance, and rolling audio. And you can give me a clap. All right. Camera's rolling in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Patriot Transition Voice. We are at the Health and Freedom Conference here in Dallas, Texas, and we have another great Patriot with us that is here to talk about and uh, give us some uh, updates on what's going on with the crisis on our board. And uh, a friend of ours, uh, actually that's sitting over there, just drove by the border close to El Paso. We did a look at the fence, um, the wall, so to speak, uh, that's being built and being added on to. Absolutely. But uh, welcome to our show, Mike Canola. You are with the Warriors for Ranchers. Right. And you're doing a lot of work with uh, ranchers that are along the border. Absolutely. And uh, tell us a little bit more about it and what kind of help you need. Okay. Well, uh, I'm just your everyday dad and uh, husband. And we had a, a hunting property. And being this is a Faith and Freedoms Conference, this property was originally a Christian retreat center. So it was high fence for protection because we're further down. And uh, people used to come there and come to church. And my business partner and I have been uh, in chats and we're like, hey, let's make a hunting property. Let's make a place where families can come and they can share an experience and get a life lesson. When, when you take a kid hunting, you're teaching them a life lesson. And it's a place where it's supposed to be fun. And when Trump was in office, we had a time of peace. And, you know, once in a while, people will know that for 120 years that uh, immigrants have crossed our borders. And you'd see one or two people once in a while. But our ranch is located at the very last ranch before the Border Patrol checkpoint. So they're circumventing the checkpoint and coming through our property, and it's gotten really hectic. So part of my story is this, is we have a six-seater Polaris buggy, and we put all of our hay and our cotton seed and stuff in there, and I was going to go feed animals. And a criminal organization was moving along the railroad tracks, and with a fully automatic weapon, they, were, they just tried to shoot at me. But because of where they were located and where I was, I don't think they led me. And thank God they didn't. I wouldn't be here to tell you the story today. And that's the first threat. The second threat was we had paid guests on the property. And uh, the gentleman had shot a beautiful scimitar horn Norris. And we had taken it to a local taxidermy place and uh, to the, the meat market. When we came back, there was a gentleman from the Honduras that was getting around our cabins. My wife and daughter was in there. They were scared. And uh, at the time, uh, you, as a person, are thinking about this person's intimidating my family, and every ounce of me wanted to beat the shit out of them. But I don't want to be used as an example by the current administration for saving and trying to rescue my family. So the first thing I was trying to notice is is he armed? It was dark, pitch black. He was wearing soft black, and I got his attention. He was very intimidated, and I was able to calm him down. And uh, we tried to communicate, but there's a language barrier because I couldn't understand him, he couldn't understand me. But I saw blood coming off of his right arm. He had lacerated himself climbing razor wire. And then in his foot, he had an injury as well. So I wanted to feed him. I said, he was saying agua, so he wanted water. And I said, eat, and he's, he's like, yes. So I knew he wanted food. I called Border Patrol, and I told him, hey, I have an illegal immigrant on my property. I need you to get here right now. We had two loaded 308s on the table. He could have slaughtered my family. And even though those were there, we got them out of the way really quick. I sat him down. The next thing he said is electrical. He wanted to charge his phone. So I got a chance to see his phone. And on his phone was a map to the coyote. And that's the folks that, that are picking them up and transporting them because right now smuggling is a multi-million dollar business. And so that helped us to find seven more people. So Border Patrol came to get him and uh, they arrested him when he was there. But before he left, I asked the Border Patrol agent, can you translate for me? And he's like, yes. He said, you came across the borders illegally. You trespassed my property. You threatened my family, and that's why you're being arrested. Next time, let's do it right. I said, I mean you no harm, and I don't want any harm to my family. But do not break the laws in our country 
come here peacefully, you'll be treated differently, but you're being handcuffed because you broke the law. And he translated back to me, I apologize, this will never happen again. What I found out later is these folks from the Honduras are harvesting young kids' organs and they're selling them. This is what's coming into America, crossing our borders. And it gets greater than that. So this is what affected me. So the second one was the, the coming into the cabins. The third one is trying to hijack my truck in the game. So strike one, strike two, now they're trying to hijack. I'm simply just texting my family saying, hey, I've had a long day, I'm on my way home. At that moment, I had one illegal immigrant at my passenger side door. I had another one running around the other side. They would have killed me from my truck. I hit the gas, I blew through, I called Border Patrol, I told them that, that this stuff was, was happening. So Border Patrol sent their guys out and uh, they didn't find them that night. And we later found remnants of them having went through our camps and our cabins and was going through our water and our fridge and those kind of things. So they're devastating our property. So after three strikes, I put my foot down and I said, I'm done with this and I formed Warriors for Ranchers. The reason I chose the angel, my father who's no longer with us, his name was Michael. And so Michael's an archangel. So I wanted to make sure that I had an angel on this logo because we want to do a humanitarian effort for crisis relief. Right now we have drugs being smuggled. Millions of pounds of drugs have been confiscated in, across Texas borders. These immigrants that are crossing our borders, a lot of them don't even want to be here. They're being used as a distraction. So I've worked with US Customs and Border Patrol. And if you guys have seen the movie Cartel Land, Tim Foley called my house and he said, hey man, these are some things you can do to protect your family. These are some things I do actively We're doing it now. He's like one of the most legendary reconnaissance guy ever. He calls my cell phone at my house and he's, I'm going to actually meet him in Tampa when I speak in there. But the gist of this is he sees it every day and he wanted to let me know that there's literally drop off points for water. And these guys are being led here by someone right. to come here. And the Border Patrol is spread thin, so they will send, let's send 80 guys this way and 50 guys that way. And if you don't go, we're going to hurt your families. Right. So I'm going to be doing an interview on a very large platform. There's going to be some very graphic images, and I can share them with you if we do another interview. Yeah. But these graphics are, this is what's going to happen to our country if we don't take a stand. And I'm talking about men that are beheaded, their arms are cut off, their legs are cut off, their torsos are cut off. And the cartels are putting a sign out that says, you are an informant snitch. We run this as a business. If you betray our cartel again, this will be you. And this kind of stuff's taking place. It doesn't need to happen on US soil. So we have stash houses that are happening. You hear about this all over Texas stash houses. This is where they're keeping the immigrants that are illegal crossing the border because they have a debt to owe. They're not here for free. They are here to pay someone money because smuggling is a giant business. Let's talk about children. Children are being left in Texas, a ranch, and I have them all video of the lady who has have found them on her property. The six. The six yeah. kids. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, five kids. They're five. five. So you had two, two groups of sisters, and then one of them wasn't related. So we know in America that our Mexican families love their children. You cannot peel a baby out of a Mexican woman's mama's arms. But we are concerned what happened to that mother. Was that mother murdered? Was she used for sex trafficking? Is she being gang raped right now? Right. I want to be a voice for every farmer and rancher who's had a gate broken into, who's had a fence that's been torn through, who has cattle that got out and got killed, or cattle that just escaped. Cattle are expensive. Angus beef's expensive. Yeah. Exotic game is expensive. There's no crisis relief. So I'm currently trying to raise money <laughs> to help these families and to push legislation here in Texas, state level, and then go to the national level and put legislation. Somebody's got to stand up for these farmers. And you've got to understand this. Kids just want to be loved, they want shelter, and they want to feel free. And right now in Texas, and, and right now in America, with the child sex trafficking that's coming across, you have a lot of adult women, men and, and children and, and kids, and most of it's little girls little girls that are being used across the border. The Biden administration has not come to Texas. Kamala Harris has not come to Texas. The people who's been there is our governor, our, our senators, and the, the folks that are fighting for us here in Texas. The, the Trump border wall, people have made fun of that wall. 460 miles of beautiful wall has been built. But can people scale it? Sure. But if you and I wanted to climb a six foot fence, we'd build a seven foot ladder. Mm -hmm. But it's gonna take us time, right? right? That time allows our border patrol agents enough time to 
respond. We have state-of-the-art equipment at our borders. With the proper infrastructure, we can build, finish building walls or build another 16, 13 to 16 miles. I mean, it's going to help. But in Trump's last address, he addressed these things. These are the places that where they will come across. Well, let's talk about that in massive swarms right now. So if people don't think that there's really a crisis on the border, they're absolutely wrong. I formed Warriors for Ranchers because of that. And pretty soon the entire world's gonna know how bad it is because it's coming all out. And these folks that are crossing the border, like I said, some of them don't wanna be here. Some of them hate our country. There's been officers shot. We've had an ambulance that was hijacked. Went down I-35, T-boned a state trooper. He's fighting for his life in ICU. Just now in, uh, in, in Texas, two of our officers were shot in cold blood yesterday. We had another officer wounded on the border. We're finding dead bodies under deer blinds. We're finding remains of bodies that had died during our cold snap in Texas. So I want you guys to know, I do care about the immigrants that are crossing our border, but they need to come through with our proper immigration laws. But the folks who are crossing through our borders are taking pseudofedrin. They want to run fast to get through, so they're taking a drug and they're lacking water. And when you take pseudofedrin and you're not hydrated, your organs shrink up and you die because you have to have water to live. Right. And so we're finding those people. So if you look up the Yavaldi Sheriff's Clog, you will find that there was a time where they know that if they go on a property, they're gonna get caught. If they sleep under the tree, they could get bit by a rattlesnake or some other kind of predator. So they sought refuge on the railroad tracks. You know what I'm going with? Yeah. They thought that, that they would hear the train. And the only reason they knew how many people there were is because how many different tennis shoes had feet on them on each side of the railroad track. It is, it is unreal and it's not fair to the Texans. It's not fair to anybody in America. And right now, do you think about any of your family friends? Do you, do you know anyone who came into the United States and they followed the proper yeah. protocols and they became a U.S. citizen? Yeah, we've had a bunch on our show. And, they just made the and, and it cost them money. Yeah, it costs money, it costs time, it costs everything. So how, how does it make you feel to know, and I'm asking you the questions and you're interviewing me, but how does it make you feel to know that they're coming across the border, they're yelling for Border Patrol. Our Border Patrol agents have a gag order right now. They can't really talk to media about what's going on. But they're calling Border Patrol, they're getting a white envelope, they're going to a hotel room, they're getting three hot meals a day, and they're getting an airline ticket to fly anywhere they want, and we are just getting filled up with them here in the United States. Right. They're bailing out of semi-trucks in the middle of our cities and increasing crime. Sheriffs, county county commissioners, and, and uh, city, county attorneys. So since I formed Board for Ranchers, I have had the mayor of Uvalde County, Don McLaughlin, call me. I have attorneys calling me. I have been surrounded by congressmen here at, the, at, this, at this event for Faith and Freedoms Conference, which I'm honored to be. But every single one of these people say, I stand with you, I stand behind you. And when I called, I, I've actually been to the state capitol bill and I wanted my voice to be heard. And there was like nine different bills being passed and I registered for every one of them because I knew I had a chance to be in front of the committee. And a lot of those folks didn't even give me the time of the day or pay attention to me. And it's you folks, I want you to listen to this right now. You may have not heard my voice at the Texas Capitol, but you're about to see it on the largest conservative news network in the world. And just so you know, I got three more interviews with some big people like um, John Michael Chambers, uh, with, uh, with the American Media Periscope, and then uh, Will Johnson, and uh, some amazing folks. And I'm honored to be on the platform, but I'm also honored to be able to be a voice for Texas. So please understand, this is nothing about me. I have my story, but I have people all across Texas in different counties calling me going, Mike, I've got a, I've got a bell out on my property. I was just trying to feed my, my kids and feed my cattle, and this guy's coming and asking me, for, to, he'll pay me 5,000 bucks to drive into Houston. That guy's not gonna pay you 5,000 bucks, folks. He's gonna beat you up when you get the keys to the car. So things I would like to tell people who are watching this right now. You need to be careful if you're on the Texas border. You need to secure your vehicles, put them in front of your cameras at your house so you have video footage of what's taken on. Have a weapon near your bed. It's unfortunate. And a lot of these folks that live in the South will tell me, you know, some of them in their 80s, they're like, Mike, we just want to live out the last days of our life without being in fear. But their houses are being broken into, their fences are being torn up, their cattle are going missing. And when they steal the vehicle, folks, they're not just stealing the car. They're driving through fences, wrecking it, pulling the seats out, and smuggling drugs in it. Yeah. And so the child sex trafficking is humongous right now. The amount of bailouts daily, if you had a scanner down there, it's every, I mean, right now as we're speaking, 
I would say on my property alone, probably 15 or 20 people have already went past my game cameras as we've been interviewing right now. And in the past, it was just a few. Now, this isn't an invasion, folks, and now it's a war. They're killing our officers, they're killing law enforcement dogs, and uh, they're hurting our people. And for that reason, I formed Warriors for Ranchers. I'm taking a stand, I'm taking the bull by the horn, and I'm no longer going to let this happen in Texas State. Your community support one you know. Absolutely, they are. I've been to the town hall in Uvalde. I'm speaking at the border crisis meeting in uh, 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 Kenny, Texas. And then I have several other speaking engagements lined up where I'm going to get a chance to inform people and get the word out there. And it's just not talking about it. I'm meeting with the men who have the power to push the legislation. And that's why I'm here. Uh, there's a lot of powerful folks. And I think you can agree with me. Yeah. We got congressmen. We have maybe some senators here. We got leaders that are at this conference. And that's why I came. And I was invited by uh, Bianca Gracias, the Perfect. conservative leader. I was just going to ask if you know her. I have done interviews with her. I have done inter interviews with Anthony Aguero as well with uh, Border Crisis News. And uh, there's some great things in the works, and I think you guys are going to hear a lot more about it. But I'm honored to be sitting in front of you. Well, I appreciate your time. Keep you doing what you're doing. We need more men like you. Do you have any more questions for me? No, you covered it all, but I would love to get you on the show. And we'll cover it all uh, in more of a hour show we're gonna we're gonna need an hour yeah we're gonna need an hour because as you can tell I have so much data coming in that my wife said honey I need you to go get some hangers at Target and I came back and she's like you didn't bring the hangers did no. you? I was like babe I can just hear people screaming for help in my head yeah. I really can there's so many people in Texas so I want to give recognition to a guy who really stood up and his name's Brent Smith he is the county attorney in Kenny Texas and he is the guy who drafted the, the state of emergency declarations that made it to all the South Texas regions that are now declared a state of emergency. That's a man who takes action. And I hope you folks vote for him the next time he, the, if it, this gentleman runs for office, but he is definitely just a, a county attorney. But I, I think he's somebody that's a leader in our community and uh, he's a person who's making a difference. But uh, if anybody needs a declaration, please email me at warriorsforranchers at gmail.com and also, if you would like to donate to my organization, you can find us at Venmo at Warriors for Ranchers at Venmo. And all that money will be used for good. We're going to be helping people with crisis relief. And then you have a website, warriorsforranchers.com. Warriorsforranchers.com. We're currently going to start a pre-sale on shirts, and all the money from those shirts will be used for, for build, rebuilding fences, travel and expenses, transportation of goods, and any kind of humanitarian effort we can do to help these people until we can push state legislation to get crisis relief to those folks. And just so you guys know, I called Greg Abbott's office yesterday. I'm hoping to get time with him. And as soon as I get time, I'm taking an attorney and a mayor and city officials with me because it's those folks who have the power to make a difference through me. And we're gonna make a difference in Texas. God bless you, Mike. Hey, God Appreciate bless you too. Look forward to talking to you through the weekend. I'm looking forward to spending more time with you guys as well.